Hello, my name is Diane, and today I want to talk about tracking reading. Outside of the book community, tracking everything that you read is probably pretty uncommon, maybe even a little bit strange. I think most people outside of this community probably don't even think about writing down everything they've ever read. But within the book community, I think it's pretty common to keep track of what you've read in one way or another, whether it's on some type of website like Goodreads, in an extensive spreadsheet that's been customized to track all of the information that you're interested in seeing, or in a personalized bullet journal just for reading. I've seen lots of really interesting and also really unique ways to keep track of reading and to create a space where you can keep track of the things that you're actually interested about your reading, seeing what genres, what authors, what you're reading books as you go, being able to write down specific thoughts or feelings about what you've read. I think it's a really cool and interesting way to be able to look back on everything that you've read. For me personally, I don't always remember everything I've ever read, so I do like having a list, even if it's just something very basic as the title and author, to be able to look back on it. Kind of jog my memory of like, oh, I remember reading that, but maybe if you just asked me everything I read last year, I wouldn't be able to tell you. But I like being able to look back at that list and kind of remember everything and remember the things that I really enjoyed reading and just having them written down is a great way for me to be able to do that. In the past year or so, I've tried a number of different apps to track my reading. I've tried a different many things to track my reading in the past year or so to kind of figure out what works for me, what I actually care about having as far as information goes, and just something that will personally work for me since there are so many ways to track your reading. I tried a lot of them and I think I've gotten down to what I enjoy seeing for myself. I've tried a number of different apps, most of those aren't really that customizable, and I tend to not make the use of all of their features, so I'm not really getting everything out of them that I could, and I lose interest in them pretty quickly. I tried having a specific reading journal because I thought it would be cool to write down the thoughts that I'm having as I'm reading. I'm not really one to annotate books. I don't really like writing in books. It just doesn't feel right to me. So I wanted to have a separate space outside of the book that I could do something similar to that. And it just started to feel more like an extra thing that I had to do when I was reading. I couldn't just focus on the book. I found myself thinking about just writing down how I felt about it afterwards, or I would forget to. And then a month later, I'd be like, oh yeah, well, I guess it's too late now. So that didn't last that long, but I did try. My main form of tracking, which I've been doing for a while now and customizing as I go, is a spreadsheet that I created for myself. It has just the information that I care about seeing, and since I tend to review most of the books that I read, I don't really need a space to write down my thoughts and feelings. Just, I finish a book, I put the information that I care about on my spreadsheet, and then I write a review to explain my thoughts and feelings about it. And that's a great system for me because I get a little bit more data side of it with my spreadsheet and a little bit more just my thoughts and feelings and my reaction to a book with the reviews. Generally speaking, I don't really think tracking your reading is that important. I know online we can get a little caught up in numbers and the number of books that we're reading and the number of books we're reading from certain categories if the books we're reading check certain boxes. And I tend to not think about those things when I'm picking what I read. I just hear a synopsis, say that sounds cool, and then I want to read it. Um, and then when I do, that's great. I don't really do anything with this information other than look back on it. But I do think it can be helpful to have that information to see what you've enjoyed, how your reading taste has changed over time, if that's something you're interested in seeing, something I'm interested in. Seeing how your reading taste has changed over time as you've grown, as you've read more things, as your life has changed. And also, it can be a good tool to figure out what you might be interested in reading next and being able to find new favorites in your future reads. Even though I'm relatively minimal in how I track my reading, 
Some people might disagree and see what I do and think, wow, that's way too much. There are definitely people who track way more than I do because that's important and interesting for them. But I do really like seeing, especially when people use custom spreadsheets or bullet journals to track their reading, because those are much more personalized and creative. I really like seeing how other people track their reading. I think it's really interesting. I love a good spreadsheet and I really like seeing the creativity that people put into their reading journals. I've seen some really interesting and creative things in watching videos like this. So I thought I'd share how I track mine. Unfortunately, I don't have a really awesome bullet journal to show you. That's not my creative outlet of choice, but I do have a spreadsheet that I think is really cool. <laughs> So hopefully, if you like spreadsheets, this might be interesting for you. So now I'm going to show you what I've actually put into my spreadsheet, what kind of information I personally like to see for my own reading, and maybe a little bit about why I have that information on there, depending what it is. So let's get to the spreadsheet. So the first thing I have is this tiny little column where I put the book covers, which seems a little ridiculous because it's so tiny but I can make this much larger so that I can pop up the image and see it. This is a newer thing that I've added. I don't know how practical it is for most people, but even having that little tiny image there, I just like having some sort of visual alongside the title of the book. And then of course I have the basic information of the title of the book. If it's part of a series, I write the title and which installment in that series it is, and of course the author. Then I put the genre that I would categorize the book in, and the date that I finished reading the book. I don't like keeping track of when I started a book to when I finished a book because I don't read one book at a time most of the time, so some books I'll start and then maybe sit down for two months and then pick them back up. And I don't like seeing that it took me three months to read this book when it probably only took me a week at most of actual reading. I just don't read one book straight and then pick up the next book. Then I just have a few little check boxes. I have one in case I DNF a book, I'll click that little check box. I don't put how far into the book I got before I DNF'd it, just that I didn't read it to the end. If I've reread a book, I will log when I've reread it and just click that. And then I also have one for when I review a book because sometimes I just forget to review books. I like reviewing most of the books I've read, especially if they're not a sequel in a series. So this for me, if I'm thinking that I don't have anything to review or thought I reviewed something that I didn't, I can look back and see if I've written a review for something or not. Then I have a few things about the format of the book, whether it was a physical book, an ebook, an audiobook, or an ARC, which for me tend to also be ebooks, but I like seeing if I got something as an advanced copy versus a final copy. If it was an audiobook, I put who the narrator was, and then I put the link. Then I have one more checkbox if it's a book that I personally own. And then one of the newer things I've added, because I was getting curious about this, I was noticing that a lot of the books I was interested in upcoming and some of my favorite books were coming from the same publishers. So I was interested to see how much I'm reading from the same publishers, what types of books are coming from certain publishers. I've noticed certain publishers within fantasy anyway tend to have a niche type of fantasy that they tend to release. So if I'm in the mood for a certain style of fantasy, I kind of have an idea of what publisher I should look to to maybe get recommendations or ideas from. And I also think it's cool to see which imprints fall under which publishers because I didn't know a lot of them. There's so many imprints and not a ton of major publishers. So for me, I write the date that it was published because I was also curious about if there was a time period in fantasy and publishing that I was enjoying more often than not. The main publisher and then whatever imprint that book actually came from. And that's all I track. I don't keep any graphs or charts. I don't really keep any information about the author or the story itself on here. This is really just publishing information for the most part because that's what I am interested in seeing. 
So that's pretty much it. Maybe you think that that's a lot of information to be tracking. It doesn't really take me much time at all, and I like having that information, so for me it's the perfect amount. Some people might think, whoa, that's not nearly enough, but I think it's cool that there are so many ways to keep track of your reading if that's something you want to do. There are so many ways to customize it as well. This is just what works for me. Let me know if you track your reading as well, and if you do, how you track your reading. I'd be curious to hear that. That's all for me today. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you next time. Bye!